All right, welcome back. In this final stretch of the tutorial, we're going to go ahead and touch on a subject called caustics. Now, caustics is another lighting technique of Menta Ray. As you can tell by now, Menta Ray has a bunch of lighting techniques and different features you can take advantage of to achieve photorealistic rendering as well as uh, other awesome non-photorealistic results. Caustics is the one we're going to look at now. Caustics is a light phenomenon that happens in real life. Now, I could sit here and talk to you about it all day long, but it'd be better if I just go ahead and show you. So, as usual, let's go ahead and open up a scene that I've prepared here for you. It's called 07 Scene Caustics Start. So, let's go ahead and open that up. All right, so this is what you should come up with. And if we do a quick render region over here at the camera viewport, viewport B, we'll see that we get a pretty nasty render. That's no good. Okay, so we're going to get this ready for, for a nice render here. And the first thing we're going to do is delete the default light. So let's get rid of this guy. See ya. Okay, and as usual, go to the ambient and turn it all the way off. So we get a pitch black render. As usual, that's perfect. Okay, now let me switch from shaded view to hidden line removal so I can actually see something here. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a spotlight so we can actually see what we're working with. So let's go to primitive. Let's go to light. And let's create a spotlight. Close the PPG. Uh, select the spotlight itself. And now what we're going to do is we're simply going to move it to a new position. So in the top viewport, let's just move it over here in this quadrant up here in the upper right. Uh, it's something like this looks pretty good. And let's also move it up. So in either the front or the right view, doesn't matter which one. Just move it up a little bit high. So it's going to be at about... It's going to be about at these dimensions right here, about 14 units up. So let's just go ahead and type in uh, 14 units. And so it's going to be about 14 units high, and it's going to be in this upper right area over here. really doesn't matter where. Eyeball it, just as long as you get it up there. Okay, now with that done, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing we need to edit here to get this working. What we have to do now is let's go ahead with the spotlight selected. We're going to go to its shader here and adjust a few things. Let's enable shadows. Let's go ahead and do a render region here so we see actually what's going on. We're going to enable shadows and we're going to turn the umbra all the way off. Okay, that's pretty good. Let me turn the intensity up to 1. Alright, so you get pretty much what you would expect, right? Okay, now for now I'm going to leave this, P I'm actually going to pin this PPG down and I'm going to collapse it. And the next thing we need to do is give this uh, little face object here a different type of material. So let's give it something that looks more like glass. So let's go ahead and select. Just click on the face to select it. And we're going to go over here to material. And we're going to assign it a fog material will be good enough. It's not the best glass shader, but for now it serves its purposes. Knock it, well, it's ambient, doesn't matter, but I'll just knock it down to zero. It's just a habit of mine. Okay, that's what we've got so far for the vase. Let's pin this PPG down just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And for the diffuse color, let's knock it all the way to pure black. So it's probably going to look like just a pitch black silhouette with a little bit of specular shading there. Let's take the specular shading and let's increase it to... Let me see how that looks. Uh, let's go with about 250, I think is going to work out pretty good. And you can't really see the specular highlight, but that doesn't matter. Uh, let me actually go ahead and increase the anti-aliasing a little bit here. Okay, that looks better. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Transparency and Reflection over here. And I'm going to make this a completely transparent object. So let's go ahead and knock the transparency all the way to pure white. So you should have a value of 1 for red, green, and blue. So now it's completely see-through and invisible to us. Let's fix that. Under here in Index of Refraction... Let's go ahead and change that to about 1.7. And what refraction is going to do, it's going to bend the actual light rays in the scene just like uh, glass would do in real life. So now we can actually start to see the glass right there, the glass vase. And to be able to see it even better, let's go over here to reflection, click on the color box, and just give it a little bit of a dark gray reflection right here until it gets to around 0.1. Then you can stop. Don't give it too much reflection. Just a little subtle effect is more than enough, as you can clearly see here in the render region. 
So that's looking pretty good. It's looking like pretty good, uh, pretty good transparent glass vase kind of object here. Okay, so that pretty much does it for editing the material for this vase. So let's go ahead and close that PPG for now. Now the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and activate the caustics feature of mental ray. So caustics works by photons just like global illumination does. So as you can imagine, just like global illumination, we have to turn it on by flipping on a few switches. So let's go to the spotlight itself. Let's go to the photon tab. And remember we were working with global illumination before. Now we're going to actually work with caustics. So let's go ahead and check that on. And you'll notice that nothing happens. Again, there's a few switches we have to activate before caustics will work. So the next thing I want to do is I want to copy the color of my light to the color of the energy of the photons just to have them match up. Always good to have them match up. Now we're not going to play around with any of these settings here, the intensity or the number of photons for the caustics. Not yet at least. Right now what we're going to do is collapse that. We need to go ahead and activate caustics in the renderer options. Now usually we're using this regions all options window over here. Let's go ahead and in that window we're going to use the current pass option. So let's check that on. That way we give control of the renderer to the pass options rather than the region options. So close that. Now let's go down to render. And you'll notice that the, the base comes out black and our anti-aliasing is higher. That's because we're using different settings. Let's go to renderer options down here. Okay, so here's our mental ray renderer options. Our anti-aliasing setting is set pretty high since we're doing previews right now. We don't want to waste too much time and have this rendering so slow. So I'm going to knock the max level to about zero will be good. And the minimum level I'll knock to negative two so it renders faster. And the next thing I'm going to do is, let's see, let's go over here to GI and caustics. And this time we're going to turn on caustics over here to activate caustics rendering. Let me pin down this PPG because I am going to be using it quite a bit. Now, it may not refresh over here, so to manually force it to refresh, just go ahead and hold down the Q key, which is for the Render Region tool, and hit the right mouse button. And it'll refresh, and you get a warning message down, down here, and it just disappeared because I moved my mouse. Let me go ahead and open up the script editor by hitting this button right here. And let me just expand this out. And we got a warning message right here. It says, warning, blah, 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 blah. No objects tagged to generate caustics were found. Sounds kind of weird and cryptic, right? Well, what Mentray is saying in its weird, uh, nerdy language is there's no objects defined as a caustic object right now. Unlike Global Illumination and Final Gathering where you just turn on the Global Illumination or Final Gathering features and it just works, with caustics, you have to manually go in and tell the Mentray which objects are going to be caustic casters. Caustic casters, that sounds pretty weird. Don't worry about it though. What we're going to do is we need to go ahead and tell Mentoray to turn this face into a caustic object, an object that can cast caustic effects into our scene. So let's select the vase, and what you want to do is hit Alt and Enter to open up a PPG with all of its different nodes open. Let's go to the Visibility tab over here and switch over to Rendering. And if you come down here, you're going to see this caustic area. Now, global illumination is all checked on by default. So is final gathering. If we go over here to the final gathering section, it's all on by default. That's why when you turn on final gathering or global illumination, it automatically works. Now, caustics is a little bit different. As you notice, it's set to visible and receiver. Those are on, but caster is set to off. That's just the default way of how X assignments are work. So let's actually turn that on by checking that on. Close that PPG. We don't need it anymore. And now when we render out, we're going to get this cool caustic effect on this uh, table or floor, whatever you want to call this, this gray flat area. And it's that same type of effect, like if you took a beer bottle or a cup or something and placed it outside in the middle of the day when the sun is at its brightest. And you place this outside on a sidewalk or on a table out by the barbecue or something. And what you would see is concentrated light rays coming through, getting refracted, and shining off of, well, a table or a floor or wherever this, uh, this bottle or glass object is located on top of. Now you notice that this is no longer coming out transparent, it's completely black. That's because we switch our options from the render region to the pass options. Let's go ahead and fix that. 
let's go over here to optimization let me go ahead and just expand this out a little bit just to get our sliders back down here and under secondary raised depth what we want to do is change the, the numbers that are right here in reflection refraction and combined what this does it tells mentor ray look you can send rays ray tracing rays a maximum of two two and then for a total of four now these two are for reflection and refraction this means that you can have up to two reflection rays and up to two refraction rays after that they cancel out when they cancel out you end up seeing this black stuff in your scene in this case the face looks black that's because if you think about it this is really how the face works the face is actually empty on the inside now the outside has one surface right the outside surface if you stuck your hand on the inside there would be an inside surface on this side of the vase there would be an inside surface on this side of the vase over here as well as another outside surface on the outside of the vase on this side over here on the left this means that our rays need to be able to pass through one two three four surfaces in order to be able to accurately display our ray tracing here so we need to change this so let's go ahead and change this to four four and eight because our combined value should be no less than the sum of the reflection refraction and the sum of the reflection refraction is in fact uh, eight so now when we refresh this render region we'll see that we get our nice transparency back okay excellent let me go back to GI and caustics because we're going to be using that more. And we're not going to worry with the optimization tab or the ray tracing for now. Okay, so this is a caustic effect. We got it working. Uh, it's not looking too great right now. There's some speckling over here. This is looking kind of like uh, with artifacts and things. We need to go ahead and improve that. But before we can improve it, we first have to see how we can edit the actual caustic effect, which is this effect up here of the highlight on this uh, gray area, this flat area right there. So I'm going to end this video here, and in the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to change and how to control the actual style and the look of the caustic effect. Then after that, we're going to talk about optimizing it and fixing up the quality for a final render. So I'll see you in the next video.